What we'd like to do in this section is to relate how we join together the comments and complaints of a customer, owner, driver, with the use and application of MVH. So Steve, perhaps. Well, it's, it's NVH um, software, the NVH software is wizard driven. So um, it's a question of uh, answer the question, yes, no, next. And we'll run through this as though you've received a vehicle with a customer complaint of vibration. Uh, no other information than that. So we'll keep this as um, a three axis vibration measurement. So where do we start? How do we tackle a vibration measurement? Well, if you have an essentials kit, you could skip this step. This is your license key. Your scope will already be unlocked. But if you've bought it as an accessory, then you will need an MVH license key. And simply for the, to obtain the key, you'll need the serial number off your Pika scope and the serial number off one of the MVH interfaces. Contact the technical support, support at picotech.com, and then we'll issue you the license key. Now, I do know, Steve, that uh, when I got my MVH kit, it came pre-licensed. Um, is the license chargeable? Is it something we have to pay for or does it, does it expire after a certain date? No, not at all, Frank. The license is free. Uh, one license with one MBH scope. Once you've entered the license key, the scope will work indefinitely. It's the scope that's unlocked, not the PC. So you change PC, you change software. The license remains with the scope. It's the scope that becomes unlocked for MBH use. First step vibration analysis is to obtain engine speed and road speed and the simplest way to get engine speed and road speed is via the OBD connector. So the software is going to ask you which form, which protocol and we use J2534 for light vehicle, heavy goods and commercial that will be J1939 or there is an option for a universal elm lead but be, beware that that will not work on a, a lot of vehicles. It, it's an option that's there available, certainly if you have the Elm, Elm, Elm lead yourself. There are other options in there. That's a square wave, so you could actually put a speed signal into channel D of the scope. And if you don't have a crank sensor, for example, for your speed signal, then you could use static RPM. You could actually enter an RPM value. We use Mongoose, remember, so it's our Mongoose ISO ProCan 2. We plug that into the Diagnostic Connector. We click J2534, click Next, and the Mongoose will confirm that it's connected to the vehicle, give us the chassis number, and we've also got RPM displayed there. Okay, I'm going to run through the rest of the wizard on my PC. Here we have the option if we want to, we can skip this, but we could add uh, this transmission style, the number of gears, the number of ratios, the ratios. It's um, an all-wheel drive vehicle. Our ratio for this vehicle, 2.8 for the rear diff and the same for the front diff. Um, there's a question here about uh, fifth and sixth gear ratio. Some uh, final drive, some transmissions have a different final drive for fifth and sixth gear. Tires there, um, there's an option to enter different tyre sizes, front and rear, 225-40R19. It's important that you actually write in that configuration, so it would be 225 forward slash 45R19. Yeah. If the format is wrong, you saw the exclamation mark there. It's a three-channel interface because the starter, standard and advanced MBH kits all come with the three channel NVH interfaces. We're connecting an accelerometer. You tap the accelerometer here, you'll see the activity there in the bar graph. That confirms the, act the accelerometer to be functioning. Mount the accelerometer in the vertical orientation with the screw thread facing forward. That ensures that all axis of vibration are detected correctly. And that is completion of the setup wizard. And there you are, that is a summary of all the information that you'll need to enter. Um, Frank, you mentioned earlier about the advanced, if you need to enter more information. Yes, if you go into the advanced subsection of this uh, screen, you're then able to put a great deal more information in, specific gear ratios, pulley ratios of various devices fitted to the vehicle. And essentially, the more information you put in, the higher the level and quality of the uh, results you'll get uh, when you're analysing the actual uh, test data. So it's always worth perhaps trying to get gear ratios as well as other information if possible. Okay, so quick summary there. Three channel interface, 
into three channels of picoscope, so that's X, Y, Z into A, B, C. Accelerometer mounted on the seat frame, and here will the, the way in which the vibration is affecting the vehicle will be determined. We'll be able to identify whether it's the vertical, the fore and aft, or the lateral. Mounting point once again, and then the animation will take us through the road test. So here we'll be able to see the setup, how the accelerometer is mounted, and the data that we obtain from a road test. Bear in mind, this vehicle does have a vibration. So there's our three axis of vibration data detected from the seat frame in all three axes. And here we are in Rotis. As you can see there, there's a T1 vibration, very high in the vertical. That's the red bar graph. We're looking at the bar graph view here. Also, you can see there, there's a high E2, the blue bar graph. That is typical of combustion. It's a four-cylinder engine, so we'll have two combustion events for one revolution of the crankshaft. It's quite normal. We'll talk about that as we move on through. But I think we can safely say here, looking at this data, we have a T1 first order vibration from a component rotating at tire speed, and that's what's essential. Looking at the same data, but in the frequency view now, We've stopped the capture here midway. We are at 73 miles per hour. We have an engine speed of 1800 RPM. And again, it's looking at the same data, but just in a different view. I, I do like this view because we can see a lot of activity from unknown vibrations. Looking at the bar graph view, we specify only the vibrations of interest. For example, T, E and P vibrations. And it might be worth just to mention that the scaling of this information can be changed very easily just by focusing the cursor on the relevant scale you wish to change and just drag it along the screen so we can hone in on a, 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 a higher level of quality of, of information. There's a lot of information to take in initially when you're using NBH. Um, for example, if, it's, if you don't use it that often, what does T1 mean? Well, simply placing your cursor over T1 there will open up a sub help menu that will explain T1 and then you can click onto a further menu to give you a full description of a T1 vibration and the kind of things that you'd be looking for in this scenario. Thank you.